Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Niagara is a 1953 American film noir thriller that was directed by Henry Hathaway. The movie was produced by Charles Brackett and written by Brackett, Richard Breen, and Walter Reich. It stars Marilyn Monroe, Joseph Cotton, Gene Peters, and Max Showalter. The storyline goes that Polly and Ray Cutler finally get to go on their long-delayed honeymoon. You see, they've been married for three years, and they arrive in Niagara Falls to find that the Loomises, Rose and George, are still in what is supposed to be their cabin. Rose Loomis is a sultry blonde who catches the eye of every man around. Husband George is older and keeps to himself a great deal. The Cutlers end up taking a different cabin, but when they go to visit the falls, Polly sees Rose passionately kissing another man. It turns out that Rose and her lover are out to kill her husband George and run off together. But things don't quite go as they're planned, and Polly soon finds herself kidnapped in a boat racing to the edge of the falls. This movie, unlike other noir films of the time, which were typically done in black and white, it was filmed in what's called three-strip technicolor, and it was one of the last films to be made in this format by Fox. Marilyn Monroe was given top billing in the movie, which elevated her star status. Her next two films, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes with Jane Russell and How to Marry a Millionaire with Betty Grable and Lauren Bacall were even bigger successes at the box office. Even though she had a starring role in this film, she was still under contract with 20th Century Fox as a stock actor and she had a fixed salary, so she actually made less money than her makeup man did for the film. The producer of the movie, Charles Brackett, wanted to make a film that was set around Niagara Falls, and one of the writers suggested that they do a murder mystery there. The head of Fox, Daryl Zanuck, wanted to put Marilyn Monroe in the film, and the screenwriters thought it was a great idea, too. This was until they received a second phone call from the studio head stating that he wanted her to be the villainous and not that girl that stands out in the film. The writers were just floored by this initially. Here's the prettiest girl in the whole United States, and he wants to make her a villain. He insisted on this, and after they thought about it, they thought, well, maybe it is a pretty good idea. Marilyn seemed to like the idea, too, and was excited to play the part. Now, there are quite a few holes and major sequences missing from the final film. You see, studio head Zanuck simply couldn't accept the fact that the police at Niagara Falls were of Canadian extract. The production had British actors playing Canadian policemen and detectives, and the studio head absolutely hated this notion and told them that he wasn't going to let them go to the sound stages to finish or fix and repair what they had done. So their only other option was to take it completely out of the film. Zanuck felt that the American audience does not know or doesn't understand that Niagara Falls is bisected by the border, and that they should have used Americans for these roles. Henry Hathaway didn't like the idea either, and he sided with Zanuck. So there are big holes in this story around these characters. The famous walk in the film of Marilyn Monroe's character Rose with her high heels on across the cobblestone streets holds what's known as the record for the longest walk in cinema history. This long shot walk lasts a total of 27 seconds. In April of 1953, the provincial legislature of Ontario, Canada complained about the film giving Niagara Falls a bad name. He explained that instead of it being an educational film that showed just the beauty of the falls, 
They were delivering a message about murder and suicide and the steamy lives of the people involved, doing nothing but harm to the honeymoon capital of the world. The rainbow cabins that you see in the film are not real cabins. They were built specifically for this movie at a cost of over $25,000. They were built in Queen Victoria Park, directly across from the American Falls. During the filming of the bus station, which is actually the Rainbow Tower and Bridge Complex, the tower's rainbow bells can be heard. It was completed in 1947, and it consists of 55 bells weighing a total of over 43 tons. It was played manually four times a day until the early 2000s when an automated system was installed by the Niagara Falls Bridge Commission. Ironically, during that scene in which Joseph Cotton is attempting to catch his wife being unfaithful, they are playing Be My Love. Gene Peters got the role of Polly Cutler after Ann Baxter withdrew from the project. After her withdrawal from the film, everything was reworked to highlight Marilyn Monroe's character. Gene Peters is exceptional in this film. If you've never seen any of her work, take the time to look her up and watch her. She's gorgeous and an amazing actress. You can kind of understand why Howard Hughes fell head over heels for her, and ended up marrying her later on. In the movie, you hear the mention of the Letterman Hospital that Rose talks about at the beginning of the film. She says that her husband George was a patient there. This is a reference to the Letterman Army Hospital in San Francisco. It was built in 1898, and it cared for returning wounded soldiers from every major conflict especially World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. It closed in 1994. The robe that Marilyn Monroe wore in the opening scenes was replicated and sold for many years by the iconic lingerie company, Fredericks of Hollywood. From the very start of this film, Marilyn's body is the centerpiece of every frame. Then as the film continues, she emerges in tightly worn dresses that show off her lovely physique. But this beautiful body caused the director, Henry Hathaway, some real problems at one point. While they were shooting the shower scene, he had to keep yelling at her to keep her away from the shower curtain and away from the lights because she insisted on doing this entire shoot naked. And the director, Hathaway, thought that if she got too close to the shower curtain, her body would be so visible that the sensors would knock it off the screen. In order to make sure that it passed the test, the scene was darkened in post-production. And that in itself is almost not enough. This is a pretty visible shot of her with no clothes on. If you've never seen this movie, go rent it online. I think you'll enjoy it. It's a pretty fun watch. It's a fairly short film at about an hour and a half. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.